Hey, I'm Andrew Connell. This video is an overview of one of the chapters in my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework, that's available for uh, purchase on my site, Boitanos.io. This overview video is going to give you an idea of everything that the chapter uh, covers. You can learn more by checking out the description uh, in the notes below the video. Um, if you got any questions about this chapter or about the course in general, just make sure you drop a comment uh, below in, in the uh, below the video and I'll be sure to get back to you. So with that, let me get out of the way. Enjoy the overview to this chapter. When building SharePoint Framework solutions, regardless if they are client-side web parts or UI extensions, there's a visual component to these controls. While you could implement these interfaces by hand yourself, why not take advantage of a modern web framework? Frameworks make data binding, event handling, and state management so much easier. Now, developers can use any framework when building SharePoint Framework components. The selection of a web framework is based on a bunch of different elements, one of which is existing experience. In this chapter, you're going to learn how you can leverage Angular, specifically Angular Elements that was introduced in Angular 6 in SharePoint Framework Solutions. So what exactly are we going to cover in this module? Well, in this quick overview lesson, I want to touch on one other thing. I want to talk about deciding between Angular and React, because that's a question that comes up quite often. So I'm going to talk about deciding between the two. And then we're going to look at a very brief history of Angular, including AngularJS, and the current support story for AngularJS, which is Angular v1. And then we'll look at the current version of Angular, which goes from Angular 2, 4, 5, 6, and up to version 7 and beyond. Then, this chapter continues with a look at what Angular is and how it's presented by Google, the creator and maintainer of this web framework. And then we're going to dive in and explore some of the various aspects of Angular, such as decorators, modules, including both feature modules and root modules, components, and services. And then I want to touch on something that I call the Angular way or the Angular development philosophy, because I think it helps to understand this philosophy and how we have some challenges with it when trying to use Angular within the SharePoint framework. Then we're going to talk uh, very briefly about the Angular CLI, the tool that we use to build and manage our Angular projects. And then we're going to look at Angular and the SharePoint framework. We're going to put these two together, at least we're going to talk about it first, and see where some of the challenges are that people have with working with Angular and the SharePoint framework. Now, we're not going to get into a demo just yet, because we're going to find in that section or in that lesson, we're going to find that we have some challenges we need to overcome. And thankfully, they've been addressed by this thing called custom elements. So we'll then talk about web components, custom elements, and something called Angular elements. And then how we can leverage Angular elements in SharePoint Framework solutions, which is the way you really should be using Angular today in a SharePoint Framework project. So let's get started. 